Oh, guys, good you hear. I am so excited. Guess what? Uh, I hope this isn't about your podcast again. Why? Did you finally listen to it? Before we start this podcast, let me invite you to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, or any podcast <laughs> All right, everybody, quiet on the set. The groom next door, take one to the audience. In three, two, one, action. And he is your host, my mommy and daddy, Chris and Stella Queen. Oh, 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 get up. Sit down. Before we start the podcast, we'd like to take a moment of silence to remember on this Memorial Day all the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Let us remember that on this Memorial Day, it's not a day of barbecues or a day off, but a day for us all to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Hello, Pups and Kittens, and welcome to The Groomer Next Door, episode 128. I am your can't get the show started co-host Chris. <laughs> the take three. The take three. <laughs> Sitting next to me as always is the lovely Sarah. Hello. Hi Claire. You're actually out and about. Hi. Hi. You want to say hi to everybody or are you just going to stand there? Want to tell them how your summer vacation is going? Good. Well, well, don't tell me. I know that. right there buddy. Good. Okay. Are you going to summer school now? Nope. Not to summer school. Yeah, soon. Soon. Next week. Yep. All we right. get to go play June in the gym. June uh, 2nd, yep. we get to play in the gym, but that's weird. Usually we get to go to classrooms, but we have to play in the gym first. It's called working up an appetite. Yep. So she's going to be running around in the gym all it's, day. Yep, it's a physical activity. Thing. She's going to be tired. Thank goodness, right? Well, this week we have a, kind of an interesting show for you lined up, and um Debatable on a lot of accounts, but then again, I think all of our episodes are debatable. And there's two sides to every story, and sometimes there's three and four. <laughs> or five or six, right. All right, so with that said and done, um, actually, I wanted to mention this. Um, one of our previous guests um, from a while back ago, Rafael Ortega, just found out if you look back on our episodes, he was a baseball player in the minor leagues, has actually made it up to the big leagues. I was really Quite happy to actually hear that. So if you're it's quite a, exciting. So if you're a baseball fan, um, you might be actually quite interested. If you're a Los Angeles Angels fan, you'd be definitely excited to hear an interview from him two years ago, maybe three years ago, something like that. No, it wasn't that long ago. It was just it was just recently. I'd say two years. It was like last year. No. That was one of our newer acquirements of jerseys. That was it was uh I it has to be two years at least. No. I'll bet you anything. I'll we'll we'll pull it up and uh, Google it. I'll Google it. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, let's dive into the weekly roundup. The weekly roundup, yeah. All right, this week on our weekly roundup, again we always talk about work. You guys have paid so much attention. Nothing new except for lots of dogs, but we do actually have a foster kitty update. So we'll actually go into that well, one. Well, we do have a couple of things. We had that one thing about, um, that just happened yesterday. I don't know. Laura needed my help. With the That's one of the right. You did want to talk about that. Um, mm-hmm. So where do you want to start? Do you want to go to the foster kitties? Well, I'll just get this part of this real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Laura comes up and she says, Sarah, I know you're not kennel, but I need your help. you got such a better read on dogs than I do. I don't know what's going on here. I was like, okay, what happened? She said that there are two boxer dog, boxers that came in for boarding. Um, they were sweet, they were loving when they were first out, um, when, their, when the owners handed the leashes over, and when Laura set up their kennel nice and pretty with the bed set up. I mean, Laura's meticulous. Very much. It's got to look like home. A hotel. Yes. Yeah. So the entire time being in there, the dogs were perfectly fine with her. She leaves and she goes and she checks in a few more dogs and about an hour later she comes back to let them go outside and they're barking at her 
they're lunging at her, they're showing teeth, they're acting like they want to bite her. Now, they're still behind the actual kennel door, so yes. they can't get to her. The chain but, link, yeah. Right. So, she comes up and asks me, can you, can you just kind of give them a little bit of an assessment for me, please? Okay, sure. Um, <clears throat> I go back there, and they're in a huge run. One of the biggest runs that we have. Um, and sure enough, they're, they're hair is all raised on their back they're lunging for that door they they want to bite your fingers they don't want to smell you they just want to get at you um the first thing i always do is to see if they're going to listen to anything you say because <laughs> there's no point to really try hard if they're just going to not listen so it's loud back there you got all these other dogs wound up they're barking too and I had to yell above them to get them to be quiet, so they all heard me, and so I'd yell, you know, quiet. Everybody stopped. Yeah, you have, yours is quiet. Mine, settle down. Now, you use mommy voice, I use daddy voice, and it takes on a whole new um, demeanor, but yeah, we both have our own command words that, that work for us. Yeah, it gets them to, to kind of, hold on a second, mama's got to talk. Right. And so... They all stop and they look and their tails are wagging and I looked at them and I said, sit down. And the one sat right away and he got up right away. Okay, well you're following what I'm saying, but you're not fully committed to listening to me. So again I said, sit. And he sat. I'm like, okay, well I can work with this. this. This is nothing more than him and his buddy scared to be around other noisy dogs. So I brought out my, my lead, and he started wiggling his butt while I was sitting. I was like, sweet, you're actually a sweet dog, you're just scared. I open up the kennel door, I go in, I put my lead around the one, and to see how he was going to do with my controlling, and he was fine, he didn't have any problems once I gave him that one command. The other one was scared and pushed towards the back of the kennel. So I took my lead off the, the one I figured that was absolutely nice, and I put it around the one that was a lot scared Um, a lot more scared, a lot scared. Anyhow. <laughs> I'll just let you go with that. He was a lot, a, he was definitely... He's scared, he was very scared. Timid. Timid. <clears throat> and I got him to follow me. I didn't have to pull on the leash. He came with me with the leash on. His head was still down, and his hair was not laying flat enough for my likings. So I pushed myself up against the wall and I had the one boxer that's super sweet now loving on me and pushing up against me and I finally get the other one to come over and he kind of lifted his head up and looked at me and I started petting and the dog just laid down in front of me. Okay, well, now I'm submitting. The other one's wanting to play and I showed Laura and Laura was like, oh, thank you so much. Because <laughs> the dogs were looking like they were going to attack. It's so nice that they were able to just come out of their shell a little bit. Know that this isn't a scary place. Yes, there's a lot of dogs barking and that's unfortunate. We can't stop it. But carrying hands at a kennel can make all the difference in the world. Oh, it does. It does. I had to go back uh, because one of our groom dogs was actually boarding. And so to take him back to his actual run after the groom was over with, I ran into those boxers. And the one was still in the back, the older one was still in the back, still had that, um... Boy, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here, you know, like almost kind of a moaning type groan that the, but you know, just, uh, I don't want to be here, kind of tantrum-y growl. <laughs> well, if you know any kind of older dog, and I'm talking about dogs that reach the 10 year mark and older, they can get real grumpy. Yeah, and he was a grumpy old man. It is. I mean, you look at a, at a grumpy old man walking around on the street. Stupid kids. Yeah. It kind of has the and same attitude. It was attitude. very, very similar. Um, the other one that you were talking to about that came up to you and was wiggling his butt, he, I, I kneeled down right next to the kennel, and he started licking me immediately. So whatever you did got through to him right away. Mm -hmm. The other one never did come over. Um, but I could talk to him, and, and he would listen, but still did the kind of grumpy old man kind of groan. Yeah, there was only one dog 
that I could not get a read on. And the only read I could get on is that he was unpredictable. Right. Um, and he was even unpredictable for his owner. He actually bit his owner trying to get out of the kennel. Yeah, we were talking about this one a while back. It happened. Yeah, yeah, it happened like last summer or something like that. And it's Memorial but, Day weekend, so of course, you know, everybody is boarding their dogs. I mean, around here, they're either boarding them or they're putting them in a car and they're taking them on road trips, which as we're sitting here recording it, we've seen multiple people actually come in. Their dogs would take them out for a walk, put some water, the dogs outside the car for the moment. And uh, that's, that's kind of what's going on around. And what's great nowadays is that with the newer vehicles, you can still leave them on right. and lock the door and know that nothing's going to be able to drive that vehicle because the key's not in there. Right. Uh, beforehand, you see a dog stuck in a car, you know it's, it's suffocating in a sense. But, you know, people have notes now that they stick yes. on the window. Don't break my window. My car is on. The air conditioner is blazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's kind of nice when these newer cars are coming out. Yeah, it's really actually quite quite sweet how it is. Um, now, on to the Kins. Now, I said this before. We're, we're doing um, daily updates on the Kins through our Facebook page, the Grimmer Next Door podcast. Um, each day I'm, I'm shooting a video, this little short video, or even this week Claire shot her own video while we were at work. Um, she's home with Grandma, and um, she would she shot this one video, which was actually really good. It was adorable. It was really adorable, and you're starting to see the, the evolution of the kittens, where they're going from being kittens to now exploring, playful, um, eating soft food type. Actually, even they're eating hard food. Even too. hard food, yeah. I was gonna now say. they're they're chomping down on the taste of the wild. They're like, yum, yummy. <laughs> this is good. So. Uh, that's a good thing. Progress has definitely been made. Um, holding the kittens, um, hissy cat, which if you guys aren't familiar with the cat that hisses and it's sp got the big M on his forehead. Yep. Spit. He uh, was day of. He did a spit hiss. And slapping uh, his paw down, yeah. scaring us. I was even asked asked the question this week. Is that the same cat? Yeah, it was actually the same cat. But a lot of holding of the kittens, a lot of forced, touching, forced, forced holding. love. Yeah, <laughs> forced love. Playing with their paws. Um, we we do have you know some questions when it comes to the mama kitten, but she's she's definitely got a good purpose. I think we we have to evaluate her a little bit longer to really get a full read on her. Well, we need to get her spayed once yeah. we know that the nursing's completely over with. Right. It's almost there. Yeah. The nursing is almost done. I think the kins are, are still going to the well just for the... The security uh, yeah, or something. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a bond security. Yeah. We put the food down and they're like, yeah, let's go. They're getting to the point where they understand what the, the pop top means oh, of, yeah. the, of the kitten food. Um, and they come running and it's so cute all three of them eat out of the same bowl but it's going to get to the point where I'm going to need three separate bowls for all three of them <laughs> well, depending we're on still how long feeding, we have them though. we're still feeding mama kitty um, uh, kitten food because she's pretty underweight and she's still nursing yeah she's still nursing so a little bit so she needs all that and she's on a grain free diet so um, we're, we're working it we're trying to do it and get them strong enough to go on and and there's possibility is the uh, possibility of oh, transport they're... still on okay for yeah. another story uh. yeah see our kittens have been taken care of by the call now so now they are actual um I don't know what that sound is it sounds like a motorcycle, it sounds like a little motorcycle in here or a lawnmower. Do we have do we have a stunt show going on in another another room all of a sudden when we're when we're recording a podcast? Ever notice how when we record, it's always something in the background? Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what the, the serious was gracious enough to um, take these kittens on as their fosters. So I'll be we'll be fostering and they'll be paying for the the. Um, the spay, the neuters, the shots, and everything else, the testings and such. Well, we cover um, transport if, we'll if trans we do it. We'll transport and we'll feed. Mm -hmm. um, Food litter still costs. It still, yeah. it still raises up. We're up to $27 worth of food so far. For I think we're more. No, because you got $10 in cat food. $10. I, bought, I had to buy a special litter box. I bought them a litter box. I bought... Well, I was just talking about food. Uh, I'm just thinking, it, it, adding the litter, adding everything. I yeah, mean, we're probably about $30, $35 right now, but... It's and it's only price. a week. <laughs> small price to pay for amazing 
cats. Well, it's a good price to pay. Small and it's price. a good it's a good lesson for Claire to learn. Oh yeah. And it's going to be hard when oh, we boy. find them a rescue or adopt them out. That Claire is going to have to go from being a foster mommy to not uh, having. See you later. Yeah. See you until the next set come in. Bye. Um, have now, a good life. Now I, I didn't ask you this before we start recording. Are we doing uh, transport tomorrow? Is that is that still on? Uh, Jules working very hard. Um, to get a rescue for this one dog. Um, this was brought to our attention uh, a week ago? Yeah, it's within a week, it's recent. Well, Robin, who is one of the Pakal volunteers, had some, or someone came into her work and asked if she knew of what they can do with their dog. The lady said that she, that is so awkward. Go. Keep going. No, I'm, the, 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 the truck. That was awkward. The little teeny itty bitty blonde was the one driving, not the. Okay. Sorry. ADD. Yeah. It's uh, bad enough. <laughs> it's bad enough. These people either make tons of noise when we're recording, or they're doing something that should be going on at night. Nah, uh, they're probably servicing the toilets or something. <laughs> I I don't think that the toilets are in the back where the food's made. You never know. God, I hope not. <laughs> well, anyhow. <clears throat> This woman said that she went to the hospital, she had her another child um, while she was in labor and, and such. Their two children that are under the age of seven were left home with this dog, this puppy, this five month old puppy. And they tortured it. So now the dog is nipping. I swear we talked about this. I don't know. I thought we did. Maybe we, so much comes through. Well, yeah. So. Um, Mike from K9 Academy, which is a local dog trainer here in town, went over to evaluate the dog. And he said, it's just the dog's a sweetheart, but they're not handling it right. And it's in an itty bitty apartment, it has no room to do anything, and it's left outside all day. Um, Another... So we've gotten a clearance to this dog is just being a puppy. He needs to, he just needs obedience training, he's fine. Um, since we got that okay from Mike, Jules looking for a rescue, and since we're heading out to uh, Springfield tomorrow, we can take him south to any rescue in that area, whether it be somewhere in Waynesville or Lebanon or something like that. Yeah, we have we'll, a lot of options on the way out. several different places down that way. And there's a good ASPCA even if, out there. Even if we do something new and take the Kabul route and go down there versus taking 44 to Springfield uh, or Monday go north and go more towards St. Louis area right but we luckily we don't have anything we have no work on Monday so we can actually take Monday <laughs> as yeah and we could take Monday as as a transport day and actually dedicate that day to helping an animal in need so this is a good thing. Um, obviously, with us having the ability to transport within the next, you know, coming days, we have opportunity. We have the means. So, um, you know, stay tuned. We'll we'll post it on on Facebook. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get in there, get this dog out of there, get into a better situation. Because again, here's another story. You know, coming around where people just the neglect. Yeah. And, I mean, I. I, I continuously have more harsh words for people like this. I'll keep that to myself this time, but, uh, you know, it's, it's Yeah, there, there was a lot of other situations that Mike said that I will keep to ourselves. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we but, keep yeah, some things. But, yeah, this dog needs to get out of the situation as soon as possible. And the unfortunate part is that the dog has, doesn't have any shots. No rabies shots, no puppy shots, nothing. So I can't just say, hey, I'll go pick up the dog and I'll take it over to my work and he can hang out in my work, you know, at the kennel. Yeah, that's true. We can't even do that. We didn't even think of that. Yeah, I can't. We can't just kennel it because Keith is actually extremely generous when it comes to needing a run for a couple days. Yeah, sure. Just clean it up. That's all I ask. Just clean yeah. it up. Give him the food that you bought. And even at that, he was, he'll donate a few cups of kibble but unfortunately with the fact that it has no shots it would be a violation of the kennel and, and dangerous for the puppy since dangerous the puppy for the puppy has absolutely no shots and, whatsoever and of course it violates department of agriculture rules so we can't do that yep so and of course 
we can't bring them in because <laughs> we yeah. we don't want to we don't want to have a full house. Yeah, that's that's the big thing with, with this cat and the two kittens. We're we're at our maximum, so it's a, a rough one. But stay tuned. We'll we'll have a response to this one as we always do. All right. Well, let's move on to GND News. Don't watch the news because I'm a kid. All right. This week on GND News, we actually have two of our really good stories for you. Um, first one comes from San Francisco, California. Um, servicemen actually back from Iraq was able to be reunited and was able to adopt his buddy from Iraq. And it's absolutely a wonderful story. Good story for a Memorial Day weekend as well. And our second story, very interesting, will lead up to uh, actually kind of spawned our, our main topic of the week, which will be up later, but ADA requirements were violated at a local Albertsons. So, with that said, let's move over to our first story out of San Francisco, California. Claire, play that clip. Tonight, a veteran dog who helped U.S. forces in Iraq has a new owner. A Bay Area soldier who worked with the dog was at SFO today to take him home. KPI X5's John Ramos shows us the heartwarming reunion. About a month ago, former Army Specialist Ken Wersch was in Iraq fighting alongside a Kurdish military outfit when word came that the camp was shutting down and the unit disbanding. He realized one of his best buddies was going to be left behind. You don't leave a friend behind. Can't do it. This was his friend, a dog named Ollie that had been raised as a puppy and became the camp's beloved mascot. He was like a morale booster. He was there when we left on missions. He was there when we got back. But Wersch says Ollie was a lover, not a fighter, and never would have survived the harsh, even cruel treatment that animals face in that country. I don't know. Some Iraqi used it as target practice for something. And that's just my guess. So Wersch contacted SPCA International, and they took the handoff, sending Ollie on a trip halfway across the world. And that's why Wersch was at the cargo depot at SFO today to reunite with his old friend. How you doing? Hey, it's good to see you. And if it's possible for a dog to say thank you, this was it. It's hard to tell who was happier or more excited about Ollie's improbable twist of fate. I mean, this right here was thousands and thousands of dollars of donation that went into this dog, you know? He's a good boy. He is. It's worth it. Today, Ollie begins a new life in a very different place, all because a good friend answered his call to duty. In San Francisco, John Ramos, KPIX5. That is an absolute beautiful story. To know that he was able to bring that dog home, was able to reunite with him, and it is true. Out in the Middle East, they will do all kinds of inexplicable things. It is bizarre. I, I couldn't tell you how upsetting it can be to see the animals out there they they don't they don't care about them they don't treat them like we would they don't treat them like a lot of places in the country do so um yeah the target practice part was like oh my god and really? not and and honestly that's not really a surprise i would i would completely believe that 100 percent. so that was uh but it's nice to know that you know when he knew he was coming home. It was cool that he made a point to go and find a way of, hey, I need help getting this dog, you know, brought back. And of course, you know, quarantine had to happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of things had to happen. They, somebody had to get in, you know, get this dog out in Iraq. They had to paperwork. quarantine paperwork. Oh, my oh yeah. I mean, the work that had to go into this, folks, was astronomical. So. You know, kudos to all the people who are involved in this. They definitely are unnamed and unseen heroes to do all that they did. So I'm very proud to have actually put that on this week's podcast. It was a wonderful story. Anything you want to add? No, that was all right. <laughs> now we'll move on to an Albertson store. Um, this was a really interesting story. Um, we definitely both have some uh, questions that came out of this, and we will discuss that. So Claire, 
Lay the clip. Only on Fox 4 News tonight, a woman says she was forced to leave an Albertson's grocery store in McKinney. She says she and her service dog visit that store often, but this time they were kicked out, and the woman says it was embarrassing. Fox 4's Alex Boyer spoke to the woman, who says a manager completely mishandled this situation. Alex. Steve, Caroline Little says this was the first time she had gone to that Albertson's late at night. Little says she tried to explain her situation to the manager who confronted her, but claims he became so upset he threatened to call the cops. Sit. Ready? This year-old German Shepherd may seem like a playful pooch. Good girl. But for her owner, Caroline Little. Ask, come. Sit. Stay. Leave it. Come on, girl. Ash is a lifesaver. Basically, Ash can detect when I'm going to have an asthma attack, and um, she'll lay on me, and she'll lift her paw up and, you know, alert. 25-year-old Little has suffered from severe asthma ever since she was a child. When you have asthma, you just don't have enough air in your lungs to breathe, and it's scary. You know? So her doctor recommended she get a medically trained service dog, which Ash is. Okay, so this is showing that Ash is registered with the United States Service Dog Registry. Last night, Little and her husband took Ash to their neighborhood Albertsons to buy groceries. Little says they were about to check out when a manager approached them. He said, no dogs are allowed in the store. And I said, oh, sir, she's my service dog. And they said, no, no dogs are allowed in the store. Little says she tried to reason with the manager, but that didn't work. Then he asked if she had her tags and certificate. And um, I told him that she doesn't need her tags. According to the Americans with Disabilities Act, Little is correct. ADA guidelines state staff are not allowed to request any documentation for the dog, require that the dog demonstrate its task or inquire about the nature of the person's disability. The rules also state the ADA does not require service animals to wear a vest, ID tag, or specific harness. He didn't care. He said that he needed to see the tag. Little says the situation got so tense they decided to leave. Little says she's embarrassed and upset and hopes her story will bring about change. And especially being a big corporation like Albertsons, you would think they would know the laws or that he would want to learn being a manager. And we're already hearing from Albertsons' corporate office. A spokeswoman this afternoon tells me that they regret the situation occurred and have taken steps to ensure that all employees are aware that service dogs are welcome in all of their stores. I'm also told that the store director has spoken directly to Little. See? All right, well, first off, the Albertsons manager was completely and utterly out of line. Do you agree? I agree. I agree completely. He should have never made her feel unwanted. She, he should have given her the benefit of the doubt and let her go. Now, there's a few things that would have made this situation a lot easier. Um, for one, who do you go with on what is law and what is not? Now, there's two different websites saying two different things. Well, there's multiple different ways of looking at this. You have the ADA who is saying this is law and this is how it should be. But then there's also contradicting um, information with the DOJ, the Department of Justice. So, I don't know how you can actually look at this. What's the Department of Justice say? Well, the Department of Justice says businesses may ask if an animal is a service animal or ask what task the animal has been trained in to perform but cannot require special ID cards for the animal or ask about the person's disability. So that contradicted what the ADA, what they said in the news report. That yeah, contradicted they're, that. They're saying the ADA says that they are not going to, they don't need a vest, they don't need to say anything, just that service dog and walk in. Now that means any Joe Schmo off the street can take their dog wherever they want. They could be not up to date on, shot record, on their shots, they could be not up to date on their worming, and they could not be up to date on their flea and tech. Can you imagine walking in a store and you see somebody with their ser so-called service dog? They shake and a tick goes flying off? That's gross, that's disgusting, and that's wrong. It, I, it is, you're right. What I see would have been a better way of handling this situation is that make it a law to where every service dog has to wear a vest, to say, hey, I'm working, leave me alone, 
I don't need anybody coming up and touching me. Because it's true. When a dog's working, they should not have distractions. They should not have a little kid coming up saying, Puppy, can I touch it? Can I say hi? No, I'm sorry. They're working. You really shouldn't. So if you have a vet saying, Service dog, please you know, leave me alone of some sort. And there's sometimes, sometimes you'll actually see it. A uh, dog is working. Please don't, don't pet, don't touch, stuff like that. Exactly. And it's, oh, okay, they're working. This isn't their time to play. They will get playtime later. Um, what would be a lot simpler is with that vest, having a clear pocket that you insert a laminated card, like a driver's license, um, in order to you know, do hair or do nails of some sort, um, you have to have a certification that has to be hanging up on the wall to show that you are certified to perform these tasks. It's the same thing with this dog. A dog is allowed to to go and perform these tasks of being a companion, being um, a di like you were saying, talking about earlier, just you and I, um, being able to detect diabetes, uh, blood sugar spikes. Yep. I mean, um, she has or, asthma and this. I mean, these are very, very serious. Um, hopefully, she has. I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, it doesn't. I didn't see it. Um, hopefully, she has a meta bracelet. You know, one of those those bracelets that actually tell in case of an emergency. There's actual bracelets for this. Hopefully, she wears one. Um, my takeaway still is the fact that she should have something physical on her that lets people know if she does end up unconscious and the dog is laying next to her, what is the problem? Because when they call 911, you need to have something to show. And, and then when 911, or when emergency responders show up, they need to know the dog, right? what they're capable of, what could be the possible injuries that the handler had, hand, uh, had suffered. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as a laminated card. It says dog's name, breed, what they're they're supposed to be for and a certificate number i think i think that there's definitely a lot a lot of questions on this now as i go down the doj a person with a disab disability bleh, cannot be asked to remove his service his and it should say his or her his service animal from the premises unless one the animal is out of control and the animal's owner does not take effective actions to control it for example, a dog that barks repeatedly during a movie. Or two, the animal poses a direct threat to the health or safety of others. Now that's, obviously, that was not the case. There's another one right underneath that says, and this definitely falls in line of what we're talking about. And this is what I did not hear out of the news report, which kind of sparked my problem I'm having. And I always say this, we always cut down a lot of these reports because they're inaccurate or they're not fully addressed. Yeah, they're not telling the whole truth. They're telling a, a sliver, a fraction of it. Right. And and again, it, the next thing, next quote is, in these cases, the business should give the person with a disability the option to obtain goods and services without having the animal on the premises. You know, she should be able to obtain everything with the dog with her. Mm -hmm. If for some reason the dog was unruly or unbehaved, then yes, or misbehaved is the proper word, misbehaved, then yes, yes, I can understand. He apparently was crossing a line where he was trying to obtain what her um, medical issues were. You know, she, and that's a clear HIPAA violation. It is, it is and, it, and it is against the ADA as well. So, yes, 100%. He is completely at fault. I do think, though, and this is for anybody who actually has a service animal, have your documentation with you of something that you can show people because you can avoid an issue like this. You know, I'm not saying that this woman's at fault. You know, that's the one thing. She's not at fault. She's, she definitely was victimized. But she also has to be understanding that she has to prove something here because a lot of people are bringing in all kinds of animals <laughs> we've done stories where people had snake and they called it a service animal a ferret a bird all these things are they're labeling them as service in quotations and you know unfortunately it it takes away and diminishes what a service animal really is the fact is is that we do have to maintain the People are going to ask questions. 
sometimes they ask stupid questions. And unfortunately, it's because all the dum dums out there that like to break the rules. And it it just <laughs> it is ridiculous on how many people who lie and cheat to get what they want, and yeah. it hurts everybody else. Um, even when it comes down to like grooming, you have so many bad groomers out there that now we're gonna eventually, I say it's going to be in the next five years, groomers are gonna have to be certified. Yeah, we talked about that last Just week. Just like hairstylists are cert certified. That's because there's so many dum dums out there that pick up two yeah, a shear and a comb and say, I'm a groomer. It ruins it for all of us. And they also, you know, they label a, a bather as a groomer. You know, like last week, I don't know what he, even his title really was. Mm -hmm. and we talked about that. That's separate. Um, but it's, it's, it's in people who impersonate. Yes. And ruins it for all the people who need it. Right. And right now that's what's happening is that too many people are taking advantage of this. The last two things I wanted to mention is, and, and these, these two quotes actually, again, are from the DOJ and they... They definitely are very important to this situation, and that is businesses that sell or prepare food must allow service animals in public area, even if the state or local health codes prohibit animals on the premise. The last thing is violators of the ADA can be required to pay money, damages, and penalties. So, you know, again, like I, I listened to that, that report, you listened to it, um, there is definitely a, a broader spectrum that you actually need to go on. Some of it, there was a, a contradiction to uh, what they said in that, and that was uh, the, very, the very first thing I was talking about. Where business may ask if an animal is a service animal, they said in the ADA they are not allowed to. Well, according to the Department of Justice, yes, they are. I do think that they should ask. I don't think they should ask what the nature is of your health problems. Because they, they have to be the ones protecting everybody else. That's true. Yes, you have your rights. But I have a right to make sure that the food I'm picking up is safe and bug-free. Well, I don't want to and see a ferret walking around or a bird flying around right next to the person either. So That's uh, where I draw my line. I honestly would rather see a snake wrap around someone's yeah, neck than a dog snakes. walking because the snake doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have near as much parasites as what a dog could carry. That's just me. And then they're shedding and they shake and hair goes flying <laughs> everywhere. I mean, it's like, oh, I really don't want that. But I. But we've been here at Panera and um, a service dog walks in, a standard poodle, had a vest on and everything. And they said, all right, under table. And the dog walked under the table, sat down and waited. And she had, uh, I think, if I recall, she had a shepherd. Now, the thing that I did find a little funny, though, is in the actual video that on this report, it had a jacket on but it, it didn't have the jacket with it at the actual store. I mean, it's, gonna, it's gotta suck. Oh man, I forgot his jacket. Oh I think that that's, that's still one of those things you should have tags or, or jacket always when it's out. Well, no matter what, it should have tags. Oh, yes. No matter what, it should have a proof of rabies tag. Well, yeah, that's true. I agree with that. I mean, that's if law. anything, it should have proof of tags. I just think that, that there was definitely, there's definitely some parts here that all parties need to, to look at and say, okay, you know what? Things, There's got to be a better way. Mistakes are made. Well, mistakes are made, and there does have to be a better way. Um, because she, can, shouldn't feel, she shouldn't feel offended. No, and she shouldn't have she been shouldn't shamed. She shouldn't have been shamed. Yeah. She shouldn't have had to leave and feel embarrassed. Right. She shouldn't have any of that. I agree. I agree. So now you guys are a little bit more informed on DOJ ADA rules. So if you actually do find yourself in the very same situation, now you actually have a little bit more information for you. And that concludes GND News for this week. Ladies and gentlemen, put your paws together for our main topic. Okay, now for our main topic. Um, we were going through, or I was going through, thinking, you know what? It's starting to become puppy season and kitten season. And people around now start getting their new additions to the family. And a lot of people like to do puppies first. And, you know, that's fine. What do you think? You know, I, I love I love the idea of having a puppy um, and a kitten. I love them both. Um, it gives you an opportunity to actually raise them. And, and I can look at Judy as the example for mm -hmm. this. 
Um, it's great to have a puppy or kitten to, to be able to teach them everything, but there's a problem. You gotta deal with chewing. Yes. Potty training. Yes. You gotta deal with behavioral issues. Yes. You have to deal with all sorts of things. I myself would just rather have an adult dog. I am 100% with you. And adult I'll rescue to, too. to early senior, I would like a more of an adult, middle aged adult dog. But hey, it's alright. Yeah, that's funny because I'm actually a little bit different. I don't really mind if they're more of a senior as well. Um, especially if I go to the shelter and I, I see one at could be 10 mm -hmm. and I'm like okay well this dog let's just say this particular dog is lifespan could be 10 to 15 years I would actually adopt it just because for who whatever reasons will? yeah <laughs> well that's a lot of it who else would yeah well um, as I was reading through um, double we always double check our facts um, we don't want to give False information? Exactly. Yeah, we're, we actually really care about the actual information. But there is an article that was written by a Claire Bristow um, back in April 2007. Related to Jewel? No. Okay. But I'm basically going to sum up what she said, and I'm not going to... And I'm going to put a little bit of my spin on you it, paraphrase too. Paraphrase it? Paraphrase it, thank you. With a little bit of what I have learned throughout the years. Um... The first thing she says is to plan to have three or four days a week to work with your puppy. And that is extremely important. A lot of mistakes that people make is that they get a puppy. The first thing they do is teach it how to go into a crate. And they stay there for eight, nine hours a day. For the first couple months of the puppy's life, you really need to dedicate time. Either have friends come over and help. Um, making sure your spouse can still do it, it's not overloading your spouse. Um, making sure your kids can do it and not overload your children and they're trustworthy to have this puppy around. Um, but you need time to dedicate to socialize the dog because the worst thing you can do is get a puppy and shelter it. Right. You get it in your house and you don't take it out anywhere. They're going to be scared of everything. In quotations, socialize. Yes. Um, another thing is to come up with your name of your puppy quickly. Try not to switch it too often. Um, find one, stick with it, move on. The sooner that the hug gets used to the name, the sooner you can start the training process and the smoother it's going to go. Rex, Spot, Dot, <laughs> Yo. Stain. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what, here's the worst part. Let me, I'm sorry, I don't want to actually interject so much, but the worst is when you have kids. They will call it one thing, and they'll forget the name, and they'll call it something else. Claire does that all the time. So you got to be very um, um, adamant that you're going to stick with the one name. Because Claire will go, like, like we've she was good with the kittens, Fussy Cat and Scaredy Cat. Oh, Hissy. Hissy Cat, that's right. Well, hissy. I was calling the one Mighty Mouse because he was just so... So daring and just fierce but, but and had that M on his head. And but she couldn't remember it. She couldn't remember it. So she came up with her own. Um, Hissy Cat, which <laughs> is the one with the M on his head. And Scaredy Cat, the other one that liked to hide. Um, so we're like, okay, you're not fine. But luckily she stuck with it. We, we just said you're going to have to pick a name and stick with it. So now we know which one's which. And so if something's going on, Hissy cat won't come here, or hissy cat needs to eat, or scaredy cat has gotten down from the window. So, <laughs> or big huge bay window. Yep. Um, has just a little bit of a lip that the cat likes to get up there and look oh, out. She loves. I was mowing the lawn the other day. The she mama was, and no, both uh, hissy, the hissy and and uh, scaredy cat were in the actual window, and they look like they look like two kittens in what would have been a pet store back in the day. The window, you know how they used to have these bay windows that would mm -hmm. come out? Look just like it. That's funny. It was looking hysterical. back and forth. Yeah, they're bouncing back and forth. <laughs> and they're like, you, I almost had this, this almost uh, retro moment where I'm like, oh, I'm going to go into that pet store. <laughs> oh, wait, I live there. Never mind. Okay. So um, another thing they said is to know in advance where you want the dog to sleep or the cat to sleep, eat, and so forth. Give them their space that they can go to. Um, it's real important to kennel train your dog where you can go and say, okay, time to go to sleep, and they go into their kennel. Don't ever use the kennel as a punishment. 
because they're just going to feel terrible when they have to go to a groomer and be kenneled. Or they a go veterinarian boarding. Be, boarding. You gotta be kenneled. And they feel like they did something bad. No, there are, you don't discipline that way. Were you going to say something? I was actually, I thought you were going on, so I didn't want to railroad you on that. Um, you know what, what's really interesting, and, and I've noticed this. I'll see a, a dog that will be adopted from the shelter, or a shelter for that matter. And this is kind of a rough one. You'll have somebody adopt a dog and they're going on vacation. So what happens is, is they'll be with the owner for you know, a week, maybe a month, whatever it may be, and then the owner goes on vacation and then they put the dog in for boarding. The dog goes into board and ultimately they think that they've been turned over to a pound or mm -hmm. a shelter, which obviously there's no such thing as a pound anymore. It's a, a, almost an outdated word to a shelter. Well, it is here in Rolla. I mean, there is no pound in Rolla. There's a shelter. Yeah. I don't think I don't actually think they're calling them like they don't call <clears throat> dog catchers like that. They're animal, animal control. control. But yeah. it's there's there's definitely verbiage that's changed and and keeping up with it it's hard. <laughs> but um, they they'll adopt some they'll adopt a dog from a shelter and mm -hmm. then they go into the boarding facility to be boarded and you can look at the dog and it's, it's very similar to an ASPCA commercial mm -hmm. about the dogs that are in the shelters and they have this sadness and oh my gosh, I'm, yeah. I, I, they didn't love me after all. I thought I did everything right and it's so heartbreaking. It is. Uh, while you come up with a particular place that you want them to eat, with them sleep, you also need to get together with everybody in your household to come up with the proper commands so the dog is less confused when everybody's saying all these words. Um, you want a dog to sit, just say sit. Don't go sit down. Some people say sit down, some people be down. No, come up with one word. Sit. Yeah, keywords. Down. Um, lie. You know, when you want the dog to lie completely down, but lie. Yeah. Just, just get together and, and don't confuse the heck out of these poor pup. Um, if you know another language, that's even better. Then it's a lot easier. Yes. Then you know exactly which words to use and you're not confusing yourself in your own head or your children. You know who I'm thinking of. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Um, I love that dog. And trust me, when you hear the word Schnell, it does not mean slow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love looking at his key words and going in, in German saying them and just watching him do all that stuff it's so much fun side note <laughs> it just it will help the process of training and make everybody a lot less stressed it will take time this isn't some real quick fix oh no puppies need constant supervision and you gotta constantly be on it you can't let them get away with one thing and then correct them the next time Right. It doesn't work that way. You can't let them up on the couch, and then the next time it tries to get up on the couch, nope, off the couch. Right. It's confusing, and it's not fair. Well, I'm going to actually take a, a little side note. Um, mama Kitty, not our Mama Kitty, the Mama Kitty, the foster mama, um, she, for the first time today, jumped on the couch. Now, obviously, she sees dogs and cats that come up there. But she wanted to know, oh, can I sit by you? Is that okay? You know, she was testing boundaries to see if it was okay. Um, she comes over and she sits a little bit of a distance, okay. And she's like, okay, I, I didn't get in trouble for this. So I see her get up and slowly, very cautiously walks over towards me and sits down a little closer to me. She goes, okay, I'm allowed to do that. So then she moves a little closer and gets on my lap. Okay, I can do that. Then she went for my cookies and you know, <laughs> to smell my cookies, and I'm like, no, that you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so at least she learned. Okay, I can sit on the couch. I can sit with you, but I cannot smell smell or try to eat your cookies. And do not get on the counter. And do not get on counters. I flip out. Get your butt off my counter. <laughs> and go over there and start sanitizing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Rambo is good at trying his, he tries the patience. Of all of them, he's the, he's the one that wants to. Huh? Rambo. Oh. He's the one. He's the mischief. Black Panther. <laughs> he's the, my panther. Yeah. He does look, you're right, he does look like a Black Panther. So, um, okay, another thing. Research your breed. We are firm believers oh, of this. You research the breed. 
Right. You don't just say, oh, I want a pit bull because all, you know, these badass people have pit bulls. I, don't have pit I say bull. English Bulldog because of Henry, as I gave him an education last night. Now, I know he doesn't listen to the podcast, but I educated a friend that I've had for a very long time last night. He wants an English Bulldog. Do you honestly know all that you need to know? I've wanted one for five years, and I put him through a rigorous education until now. Now he's just kind of like, oh. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. I mean, I, I'm a bubble burster. <laughs> okay, so also in that same aspect, and I love if you're looking, bulldogs. if you're looking for a cross breed like the golden noodle, oh, gosh, here we um, go with this. a schnoodle, a teddy bear. A teddy bear. <laughs> I'm still not quite clear what a teddy bear I'm, is. I'm off on that too. Um, you need to know, since there are so many of them out there, that you need to know what is or what would be their predominant traits. Right. Like schnoodles. I'm not a fan of schnoodles myself. They have both of the um, the breeds bad traits all together in one dog. It's unfortunate, it's sad, especially the white schnoodles, those are even worse. Um, they can get aggressive, they can get uh, dominant, they can get protective, and it can make for a very aggressive dog. Um, so definitely research, 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 research. Which is always the big thing, I mean, you need to know health conditions, you need to know allergies, you need to well, know... You also need to know whether, what is their typical triggers for aggression. Yeah. You know, Akitas, I said it before many times, Akitas are going to push, and they're going to try to gain um, dominance. dominance. Yeah, they're and very if alpha. You don't, if you do not stand up to them and say no, then they're just going to dominate you. Which goes to that side story where... Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> know the trait. Now, there's some there, there. dogs that you go, and if you raise your voice to, you're just going to hurt them. You're just going to ruin their psyche. And you can't do that. Chihuahuas, you have to. very sensitive. Yeah, you have to be, uh-uh, stop it. But with big dogs that are going to challenge you, it's no. <laughs> and, and take it from people who have the big dogs, the sensitive small dog, and in between. It is definitely it is definitely a, a course that you have to learn. And depending where you get your dog from, we are avid believers in adopting. But we understand and know how it's like to have a purebred. Um, find out what the dog was eating originally. If it's a good food, keep him on it. Don't change it. Gosh, changing foods. If it's a bad, if it's a lesser quality food, if it's a pedigree, or if it's. Um, Old Roy, oh, God forbid. Oh, did you see the lady at Walmart asked me to t help her take down some food yeah, yesterday? Yeah, I always told you don't do that. I, I, okay, sorry. I don't mean to derail you, but every time I go to Walmart, either I'm asked to help. She was a nice elderly lady, and she wanted some Old Roy, and I just wanted to tell her, please, you can just feed your dog cardboard. It's more vitamins in cardboard. Oh, it kills me. <laughs> So make sure your puppies are supposed to, most breeds of puppies are supposed to be on puppy food up into a year. Um, and then you go and you move on to the adult uh, version. The two different versions of food, one has a lot more fat in it than the other does. A puppy is going, 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 and they're, they're growing. So they need all that extra protein, they need all that extra fat to help get them through their growth spurts and help get them through their energy spikes. You know the kitten food that we're using. We're yeah. using good kitten food and that yeah. goes up to a year as exactly. well. Exactly. So that's one thing you want to make sure is, is keep them on a good food. Um, another one would be puppy or kitty proof your home. Much like child proofing, you got to make sure that they can't get to sockets. Um, when cats they like to um, use scratching posts, but sometimes they don't want to go to the scratching posts. They want to go to your wall. Yep. And if they stick their toe far enough into an electrical socket where their nail is, it it's very shocking. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Now, a, another, I know you're going to say this one, cords. Yes. Yes, and for the love of God, yes. This is where I'm going to actually take this one because there's a lot of different cords and cables out there 
that all, any of you techies know <coughs> are not only important, they're very expensive to replace. Yes. Let's start with the HDMI cable. <laughs> that one can be very expensive. And Especially the longer one. <laughs> that was where I was going to go. The extended ones are very, very, very expensive. Um, the expensive ones are very, very expensive? Yeah, no, I said the extended ones. Oh, extended ones, okay. They're very expensive. Um, cell phone wires, Those Bluetooth, you know, the people that have your LG wireless earphones, they can chew off an earbud. I was going to say wireless earphones. Those can be very bad. I mean, I, I have some LGs. They're $67. Any, Those can be, and, and that's cheap. Any kind of cords hanging from your computer. Yes. TV, now it's gonna be hard cable. to try to block those off to cats since they're so agile and go anywhere. And limber. Yes. Mm. Uh, but try to make them not so chaotic because cats love mischief. <laughs> and if cores look chaotic, they're going to bat at them and try to get them to move. Roll, roll around in them. Yes, and what or, happens? Or they like to lay on top of warm um, spots. Mm. So they'll get up to where your DVR is and sit down on your DVR where it's nice and warm, knock over your you know, your game consoles. And uh, well, uh, that's one of my things. I noticed that like Mom and Kitty loves to sl sit on the uh, old PS3. And press up against her TV and where press, it's nice and warm. And what happens is she presses up on the TV and of course it turns it off or turns the volume all the way up or whatever. Um, that yeah, that's that's acceptable. It's the the cat kitten rolling around and they pull things down. You knock down a video game system. You knock down a computer tower. You knock down a TV, and the possibilities of it breaking are very good. And don't get after them and yell at them for doing it. The initial startle of everything collapsing on top of them is scary enough. Oh, yeah. They don't need you running after them. You stupid mutt! No, don't <laughs> With do a baseball it. bat in their hand? Yes. Or, or a no, rolling pin. <laughs> yeah, no, no Beethoven this, you know, right now. <laughs> I just thought about that just now. Uh, but definitely... Oh, uh, toilet lids. Toilet lids are good. Yeah, that's... Make sure they, they shut. Or they when you are at work, let's start with when you're at work. Make sure that the toilet's down because your, your cat, your kitten may have jumped up there and fallen in. I'm not going to guarantee that they're going to drown in a, in a toilet, but they might be in there until you get home. And that could be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could drown in that because they can't, they, they can't really get any traction to get out. Okay. Now, next on our list is stock up on necessary um, supplies, including food and water dishes, crate and bed, toys including chew toys because when you have a puppy who constantly chews all the time instead of chewing on your lovely furniture it chews on its toys you got to show them that uh, you know mommy's couch isn't where you chew you chew on this thing called the con <laughs> the con is definitely a very very useful, uh, useful um, <laughs> item especially the one where you put the paste in it yes now I do want to warn you you got to be careful, and you do need to monitor them when monitor them while using it because there have been dogs that got their tongue stuck in there, in the middle of the toys. So just be careful, and you know monitor your puppy. You, you don't leave a, a toddler alone. Don't leave a puppy alone. And, and they're they're just figuring things out, so they're gonna definitely um, explore a lot more. Kittens and puppies explore. Oh boy, did they ever explore! Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, after the toys, you'll need a leash, a collar that fits properly. Oh. If you have a problem trying to find a leash or collar or a collar that fits properly, properly, take them with you to the pet store. Um, most pet stores will allow your dog or cat to come in with you. If they don't, there's a problem. Right. Um, ask for help, and be sure that they know what they're talking about. <laughs> That's uh, a, that, hey, man, that might be difficult. I do not have any problem stopping what I'm doing. I don't care if I'm two hours behind. I'll stop what I'm doing to help measure a harness properly because that life of that dog is more important to me than me getting two hours behind and two hours and 20 minutes behind now. So this is actually every day. Yeah. Um, now <laughs> what what happens is, and this is, this is kind of comical, Sarah will have a dog that will be a grooming uh, customer 
and on the actual paperwork it'll say and buying XYZ type harness. leash or harness. Yeah. Uh, please, please size. Please size. Now, obviously, we get zero percent of commission to sell, and, and of course, we're not the ones who it's our product to sell. So you're measuring, making sure it fits on the dog. It always makes me laugh. I cannot help but go. Hey. Wait a second here. You're measuring a product that we're not even getting a percent of a percent on. But. But We're saving a life here. I know. Because a I proper know. fitting harness and leash or, or collar is very important. But it makes me so laugh. So make sure your puppy has room to grow or get one that fits in for now, at least for another month or two, because sometimes puppies love to chew through their harnesses and their collars. So I don't expect, I, I wouldn't go and buy expensive ones until they reach adulthood and they know not to do it anymore. And check your your dog's leash and collar all the time always make sure everything on the leash and collar or harness works properly make sure you can still unsnap and snap the collar back on make sure the snaps are perfectly fine for the harness as well make sure your leash isn't chewed through that's where I was going how many especially with a puppy if you don't put your leash in a spot where the dog can get it, don't put it somewhere it's going to get it because what it's going to do, especially when it's teething, and for anybody who has ever been around a dog or cat that teases, they'll chew on anything. So that's where the wires come into it. But they'll chew on that leathery or wiry type leash. What's going to happen is they're going to chew all the way through it. You're going to not know this. And then you're, you're going to put it on your dog. You're going to take it outside. It's going to see snap. a squirrel, and bye bye. And there it, it goes. Mm -hmm. Dogs aren't chewing to be mischievous. They chew because it feels good. It's just like buying a teething ring for a baby. It feels good. It it just it helps. Puppies typically start teething when um uh, I want to say about what was it? Um, <laughs> puppies typically start teething um, with their adult teeth around five to six months old. Their puppy teeth coming out and their adult teeth come in. Um, so be careful with that. There's a Make lot. Sure There's you... a great deal that, that you need to know. A lot of people, they just go, ooh, let's go down to the shelter today. And then the next thing that's out of their mouth when they get there is, ooh, pretty. Mm. Okay, so now make sure you got a name tag. Make sure your dog's microchipped. Oh, the microchipping. Mm. Let's just stop. <clears throat> Let's just stop right there. If you haven't secured the microchipping and you've kept it up to date, obviously. If you have if you've already failed at what we've already said, well, you got a very busy day ahead of you. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Make sure that you have some kind of dental kit of some sort. One that they you can use to brush your teeth. Uh, make sure that you can get your fingers in their mouth and make sure that they're okay with it. Play with their paws, play with their ears, play with their mouth. Put your hands in their dog food bowl and move their yes. dog food bowl around. Exactly. And teach them that no matter what, you'll still get your food, so don't bite fingers. This is going to be something that's going to be beneficial to all of you who either will have kids or have kids currently, especially the little ones. They love to go to the dog food bowl. And I'm so grateful that our daughter never was affected by this. Good, good, good thing. Okay, last but not least, remember you will need a great deal of patience, kindness, and a sense of humor. You're going to get a puppy, you need to be able to step back and laugh and laugh and laugh when it gets into its dog food and it's all over the floor. Yep. You can't get mad, you can't freak out, you're going to need to take this laughing now the only thing i have to say and this is with cat and dog food especially with now having these kittens around every time i see the mess of cat food that i end up sweeping up or you sweep up the only thing i always think is that's money i'm sweeping up that's going in the trash i mean it's not like i get mad but it's the oh no I, how many how much is this right now that i'm sweeping up is waste. this is this 50 sucks. cents is this a dollar's <laughs> worth i mean can I, can I take it in and cash it in for cash? Um, that's the only thing I look at. And we, we do have waste. We, we find that, not our dogs, uh, but the kittens and cat, yeah, there's there's definitely waste right now. But these are, these are the, um, I guess it's the price you pay 
Yeah. And it's not a big deal. I mean, and then eventually you'll get on the same track, and yeah. it's going to be easier and easier and easier, and then you'll be like, oh, I miss him when he was a puppy. Oh yeah. You know, you know, those pictures that you see on Facebook on your timeline. Oh boy, it's just the same thing when you have a kid. You're like, I can't believe that was five years ago. I felt like yesterday. Where'd that go? And I will add this. For a dog. This is where it has started with the podcast, and I'm going to say it again. The actual backbone behind this whole podcast is when it's time to find a groomer. Research. Yes, do your research. And do the research for your veterinarian as well. Yes. Um... You can always change. You don't have to commit. It's true. Um, sometimes it's, it takes people three or four groomers to find the right one. And sometimes it takes you quite a few veterinarians to find the right one. Word of mouth does help, though. Yes. Make a educated guess, basically. Look at um, reviews. Find out from what friends say, uh, people you trust. S hear what they say and then go from there. Because sometimes, they, oh, they're just perfect. Well, that doesn't explain to me what they're perfect at. Right. I mean, they may be somebody's <coughs> best friend. Right. And they're just going to tell you, oh, you need to go to my friend, or you need to go to so-and-so. Yeah, they're just, just going to bloat about it. Oh, and they're so great. And you, unexpected, you know, unsuspectedly go, oh, okay, I'll go to this person and recommend it. And you find out later, that person... Uh-oh, not and so that, good. And it makes sense with the uh, same thing with the negative comments. Yep. We have people who hate us. Yes. Who hate what we're doing. Who hate that we foster so much. Who hate that we raise money so often to help. Yes, people. Yes, folks. There are people like that that hate others for doing good. We got labeled on our, on our podcast. Somebody has posted a negative Wait. remark because they're a groomer. And they don't like the fact that we have pulled back the curtain and show... That yeah. there are bad groomers. And if you're a groomer, you really shouldn't be listening to this anyways, because <laughs> you should I, know this. I do find that we do get a lot of people, and this is really cool, we get a lot of um, future groomers who actually listen to the podcast. That's one thing. That's educating yourself before you make a And I couldn't decision. tell you how many times I've had people go, I'm, I'm enrolled to go to a grooming school, and I wanted to know exactly what I'm getting into. So mm -hmm. I listened to the podcast, and it's really helped. That's great. That's I helpful. love that. That's but very if, helpful. And if you really want to read what this joyous person wrote, you can look on iTunes because that's where the comments made. <laughs> and if but, you're going to say, I'm a groomer and I was offended, then you know what? We did our job. We did our job very well because obviously we exposed you. You're not exposing us because we're giving good information and we're saving lives. You're actually complaining about us. How a free show. funny. Yeah, I know, right? How funny <laughs> is that? And that's how you take criticism, folks. You it's just read, you read through it, and you got to read between the lines when there's negative marks. Sometimes there really needs to be a negative mark. Yeah. But if they're just going on and on and on, well, obviously they have they're scorned and they're mad about something, <laughs> um, and they're just looking for somewhere to complain because you know there are chronic complainers. Yes, that's yeah. a nice word to use because I was not going to use that word. Chronic complainers. I like it. It's, it works. But all in all, just have a sense of humor when raising a puppy. Yeah, or kitten. Or kitten. Yeah, and, and look, folks, we 100% support it. We think it's great. Well, by that sound, Claire has turned on the applause sign, and that must mean we got to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> actually, long show this time. Apparently so. So, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. And I'm Sarah Green, making sure everybody realizes life is short. Thank you, pet. Claire? I'm Clay Green. And you don't talk in front of the microphone. Try again. And Claire? I'm Clay Green, and uh, give, your dog, give your dogs hope and friendliness. All right. <laughs> she does get a little shy in front of that hope mic. Hope and wonderness. Hope and wonderness. All right. Well, that's a new one. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, gotta go in my bedtime. And now the show is over now.